In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Four kids survived 40 days in the deadliest jungle. Nah, I haven't heard and, about this. And this was all because they said a duende helped them. What the fuck? Yeah, so listen. There was four kids on the plane, a mother and a pilot. Yeah. So they were flying over the Amazon rainforest. Mm. And suddenly the plane crashed into the middle of the jungle. The four kids survived. Mom and pilot dead. Shit. The oldest was 14. Mm. Nine, four, and there was a one-year-old. Damn. So imagine 40 days. You know what the Amazon rainforest has? Jaguars, spiders. Yeah. <laughs> Poisonous shit, any, man. Everything, right? <laughs> so everyone's saying that the search team went out. They they found clues of diapers, baby bottles, but mm. they couldn't find them. So that's the theory. Because it's like the Duende took them in, helped them survive. These kids in like one of the, you know, it's deadly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a, as soon as the, like the rescue team came, they got sent off. So they still haven't found them. They're gone No, they, they found them. They oh, found they found them. them. Yeah, after 40 days. So that's what they told them, the Duende. No, no, that's that's like the theory. I mean, nonetheless, even if it wasn't Duende's, days, it's still a miracle that they survived that long. I've just recently started hearing about the Duende's. days. I've never really heard about them before, so it's kind of a new one to me. But they seem to be coming up more and more on TikTok, so we're probably going to start seeing more of that content. The next thing that's coming, though, I have a feeling is sightings. There's going to be sightings of Duende's. days. Honey is not food for human consumption. Mm. They make it food for their babies. Oh. It's breast milk for their babies. It's actually a regurgitation. It's vomit. Honey is bee vomit. It's maybe sweet and sugary, but it's still vomit. And they vomited pre-digested food for their baby, not for you. So it's going to spike your blood sugar. You don't need, you don't need honey. This is what you want. Because you're not eating this, and you're not eating this because you're eating the starch. You cannot eat potatoes and rice and macaroni and enjoy fruits. One or the other. You get your sugar from starch or from fruits. And if you're getting it from starch, this is going to become a problem, according to your doctor. And they take you off of fruit sugar because the fruit is your medicine now, and it's a very powerful medicine, and it's going to heal you radically. And the doctor said, you don't eat fruits because your blood sugar spikes. It's because it's more this job. The medicine is too powerful for you. Now, I'm not going to lie. I love my honey. Honey is an amazing product for me for whatever reason, whenever I'm sick. I always take a little bit of honey on a spoon or put it in my tea or something. And it does make you feel better. At least it does for me. Let me know your take on this because I have a feeling a lot of people will be against this. There's a lot of comments on this video that are in a disagreement with this person. Why is it always the low quality videos that are the creepiest? I know y'all saw this big figure walk by, and now they say it's a cryptid, but I actually think that it's the Night Lady. The Night Lady is said to be this woman that lurks on people's houses in the middle of the night, waiting for you to fall asleep. It had its origin in Mexico, and she's been linked to real kidnappings. She waits for you to go to bed, and she'll sneak in through your window and kidnap you. Many people believe that this lady is actually real. Again, like I said, she's been linked to real kidnappings. So do we think that this is the night lady? Let me know in the comments below. I don't know. The thing that she says that is walking by, it does not look like it's walking by. It looks like it's either floating by or it's hung up on something and it's just being passed by. I think that that's just a, a sheet of some sort just hanging from maybe a power line. But I never heard of the night lady. That was a new one. Let's talk about these airships and whatnot. You see how it's docked right there? Kind of strange. You know what else is strange? The allegedness that they were docking right here and they were collecting the atmospheric energy, allegedly. If you look at a lot of these old photos, why do they crop out the sky like that? Look, you can see the tree line is obviously, it's obviously cropped. Several old pictures. Look, what are they trying to hide that was in the sky? Or this one right here. I mean, I'm not even, don't even get me started. This is, uh, when they were building the Washington Monument, man. This is what it looks like whenever one actually crashes, not the Hindenburg when it blows up. That was a tragedy. Yeah. But look, if you look at all these pictures, these are all crashed blimps, airships. 
they could take a beating, man. Like, they weren't these fragile, weak things. They used these to travel all over. It was a much different place back then, and there's so much that we don't know. There's another one with the sky. Like, what's in this? This is from 1860. A lot of these pictures, it was like the 1800s. What's up with blocking the sky out? What are they really doing is what I want to know. Let me know your theories in the comments, or let me know if you know anything about this. Because I am always interested in learning about these cover-ups of these photos, because some of them do look like they're hiding something. Look at this, you guys. The Simpsons have done it again, y'all. The Simpsons have done it again. You guys remember all them whales, the sharks, the dolphins that were beaching? Yeah, check this out. Look at this. Look at this. They're telling y'all. Like, they're literally trying to come on land. I don't know if it's because the water's getting hot or anything like that. But they're literally telling y'all that the dolphins are trying to come on. Look at this. The Simpsons have done it again, right? They're literally telling us what's happening. And people seem to think it's like, you know, it's like they're tired of what the humans have been doing, right? Like eating all the fishes, destroying the oceans and the waters and the seas, right? Killing all the animals, right? Doing mukbangs with the animals, you know what I'm saying? Live animals, you know what I'm saying? So it looks like they are fed up because the dolphins are the protectors. They are literally protectors. Look at that. I bet you if they could come on shore, some people would not be here, y'all. I'm telling you, that's crazy. I mean, there's sort of a resemblance there. It's not quite as accurate. It makes me wonder if it's like the sonars going off in the ocean. This might be... It just might be hurting them. I don't know. That's just a guess. But it really is sad to see them beaching themselves. If you live in the United States of America, more than likely you recognize this right here as the Washington Monument. And this slideshow that I got tagged in has been getting some traction and starts off with a photo of the special tree that's inside of the Washington Monument. There are then some photos that show what claimed to be the building process. And finally, the modern day Washington Monument. Now this right here seems to me more like a creepypasta or made-up story. They're claiming that this tree had special powers and was fully sentient and conscious, whereas the Washington Monument, the inside, really isn't as interesting as this. For those of you wondering what's actually inside of the Washington Monument, this diagram does a really good job of explaining it. You can pause it and read it if you'd like to. Essentially it boils down to it's pretty much hollow, you're allowed to visit it, go up to the very top, check out the observation deck, and go back down. There's only a set amount of visitors that are able to go inside every single day, but I'm sure if you asked any of them that went inside if they saw an old tree, they would say no. I mean, that's a pretty cool little creepypasta if that's the case. It's actually really clever because I would have never have thought that something in the Washington Monument was being covered up. But the idea that maybe they're keeping some kind of tree of knowledge or some kind of anomaly hidden right in plain sight in some kind of obelisk, that's pretty neat. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you so much for being subscribed and thank you for watching. We find some very interesting signatures when we look at obelisks. Like, strange. Energetically, when we measure obelisks and we look at them and it's the fact that the Founding Fathers built them everywhere, there's one in Washington DC, there's one in London. like. Yeah. They knew about the, knew this. Something. Oh, 100%. Like, they knew about the importance of them. And so what I can try to come up with is like, well, look, if the pyramids are some kind of a central location, then the obelisk would be like the receivers all the earth. The founding fathers and these groups know far more than we realize. These groups? Say secret societies. I'll, oh. I'll call them. Okay? okay? It looks like our secret societies sort of got corrupted later on. This has gone back to the very ancient times. I don't think that knowledge was shared to every single person in the population. It was obvious it was a powerful group of like priests and sages. And I don't think it's changed that much. I do think the founding fathers were great men. But other bad influences got involved. That's pretty neat. We just got off the topic of the Washington Monument. And to think that maybe... Just maybe the Washington Monument is something that's always been there. That's kind of cool. Do any of you have theories about like Washington DC, the Washington Monument, the White House? Let me know in the comments because I am interested in that kind of stuff. It kind of aligns with Tartaria theory and I'm still touching the surface of that. Buddy just sent me this video right here. All I can say is goosebumps on top of goosebumps. Y'all watch this man. This isn't, this is, this is going to get this place shut down.
Okay, so this whole thing had kind of been confusing at ports. A minute ago, I saw her take a video of a rock that was chipping, and it shouldn't chip like that. And then my Shakira was over here, and she's beating on this stuff, and we realized that this chip's like a plaster, and it's like a hollow sound compared to the real rock. Look, there's a perfect scene. I mean, perfect scene. It goes all the way up. I'm like, this is placed together, placed over. And then probably was like hanging over a giant or some shit. Okay, so all mighty powerful ones, all I ask is when y'all shut this place down for research purposes, just let me and Nick and them come back and check it out. You know what I'm saying? We just want to see the inside. That's all I'm asking. Then I can post it and y'all can all see it. Dang, really all I can say is I just want to see around the whole rock. It does kind of look fake, but I see people in the comments saying that's just a common look for sandstone, so I can't really tell. Let me know your theories. He was walking back home late at night when he sees this. Somewhere in Mexico, a man was on his way home late one night when he begins to notice what sounds like a whimpering woman. As he walks towards the source of the sound at a nearby park, he sees it. I can't tell. No mames, mire esa madre sota. No mames, ¿quién eres, güey? No mames, ¿quién eres? Ay, capo, hijo de su puta madre. No mames, güey. No mames, güey. Puta madre. Oh, hijo de la chingada. Ay, qué cabrón. Like something of a nightmare, this massive silhouette of a four-legged being can be seen approaching him as the man runs for his life. We can hear whatever this thing is whimpering using the voice of a woman as if it's trying to lure him. The events captured in this video of unknown origin describe a shape-shifting creature of Mexican folklore that uses human voices to lure its victims, named Nahual. After posting this video, the man remains truly uncertain of what exactly was that attack. Them. At first I didn't see it, but then it pointed it out, and yeah, that looked like a big massive shadow figure. If this is a real video, I would really like to know what that was, because that was really big. The only thing that kind of makes me believe that it was not real is two things. One, the shadow figure was just abnormally dark. Everything around him was kind of lit up, but that shadow figure just stayed dark. And the second thing is, is when he was running around, it looked like he ran around in a circle and ran back towards the direction of the shadow creature. But maybe that was just a trick of my eyes. Let me know what you guys think about this video. Look at what I came across on YouTube, you guys. Kamala Harris was doing a commercial and look at her neck, bro. This is not normal. This is not normal. And her head looks off. Look, why does her head look like it's off? Like, how do they think that we're not going to notice this? Does, can what? Did her publicists really not think that we were not going to see this? Or are they doing this on purpose, y'all? There's no way. The term black don't crack does not exist for her, bro. What, bro? This is not normal. Look at this. Bro, look at, look at Kamala Harris's neck. Look at Kamala Harris's neck, bro. You cannot tell me that she's not one of them Lizzie's, bro. Look. Have a much greater impact. Look at that this. That is because it takes time. What the? To hire organizers and staff. Bro. It takes time to open off. Do you guys see that? In battleground states. No, so bro. Earlier we did no it. way. Better. Please send a donation to support Joe and me. And they're asking for donations? And we are all up for it. No. Bro, ain't no way. Do they really think that we are that gullible, y'all? I get what he's saying, but to be fair, Kamala Harris is like almost 60 years old. Uh, you can tell on her face she's got a whole lot of makeup. It's practically caked on, if you will. There, it's very thick. You can't see her age on her face, but you can see it on her neck. I do not think that she's a lizard person. I could be wrong, but I really think that it's just her makeup team is not touching up her neck and she's just an older woman. Let me know what you guys think of this. Have you ever heard of a Rife machine? Yeah. 
So I know you're very familiar with frequency. So I put a Rife machine on. I put it on my feet. Sometimes I put it on my hands. Sometimes I put it on both. So basically, for those listening who don't know what a Rife machine is, a Rife machine sends a series of frequencies through your body. It's kind of holistic medicine. I just got a Royal delivered to my house, the Royal Rife machine. Really? Yeah. So from what I understand, the Rife machine, it does all kinds of good things for you. It can break up bacteria. It can break up viruses. They say it can break up cancer. Cancers, yeah. um, cancer cells. It's also very grounding. So I just recently learned about these Rife machines. And by learn, I mean I just found out about them on TikTok. And they caught my interest. The next video we're going to watch, I have not watched it all the way through, but I watched a little bit of it just to see if it was of the same topic of the Rife machine, and it supposedly is. So we're going to watch that. So if you're interested in learning about this Rife machine and frequencies and how it can supposedly help your body, let's see what it's like. I am going to be trying out something called the Real Rife Machine, which is a machine that uses technology that was developed by Royal Rife back in the early 1900s. And it is frequencies designed to balance your body. I honestly don't understand that much about it, except that I know it works because I've had some experience with similar technology, but not the real Rife machine. So I'm gonna be sharing my experiences with you and here's the unboxing. So it comes in this awesome hard side case. I love that and it got shipped like this, so it didn't waste a box. So the real Rife machine is owned, his company is owned by Matthew Rife, who is the nephew of Royal Rife, who is the inventor. He was kind of this amazing Tesla-esque genius that sort of got canceled. All right, here's what it looks like inside, setup instructions. Oh my gosh, look at these beauties. Look at this sacred geometry in copper. I cannot wait to try this out. You do need to download this app right here and it's free. Okay, then it comes with this amplifier and to this you have to screw in an antenna so that your, uh, I believe it's for Bluetooth. And by the way, if you're like totally mystified about what this machine is, don't worry. I'm going to be talking to Matthew live over the next few weeks to share what this machine can do for people. Then obviously you need to connect it to power into a regular outlet or power strip. Then all three of these knobs need to be set to 25% and I know that has something to do with it being the actual Rife frequencies. Then you hook up the Bluetooth and allow that to hook up to your phone. Then the Z app has all of these different sequences that you can go through for whatever physical issue that you're battling and so I'm going to find one. I chose one for 40 hertz that is to help with brain function because I'm brain fried from working on taxes and paperwork all day. Can anyone relate? And then you put your amplifier in between your two coils and put the coils as far away as possible. And you just need to be within 12 feet of them. You don't have to have physical contact in order for it to work. It was only like two minutes of a sequence. And I have to say my mind is so much clearer it worked almost immediately and I could actually kind of feel a pressure in my head, not uncomfortable. It actually felt really good. Let's do another one. Let's produce relaxation. Okay, I'm like three or four minutes into the relaxation sequence and I am telling you, I am so zen. I just feel relaxation waving through my body. More on this in the future. I'm a little disappointed I didn't actually get to see it used. I may have to look up some more about this. I might not on this episode. Leave a comment down below if this is something you're interested in learning about with me. Because I'm kind of interested in it. I'm just a little afraid. It's kind of sketchy looking. The entity who advised war generals, including Napoleon Bonaparte, the Little Red Man. An entity known as a harbinger of tragedy and disaster across France, appeared to some of the nation's most prominent figures for over 260 years. Catherine de' Medici was the first person to see the Scarlet Spectre when she came face to face with it in 1564. She described it as a gnome-like creature dressed in all red. She is now remembered for the infamous Bartholomew's Day Massacre. Henry IV of France would be the next person to see the entity right before being assassinated by an insane school teacher in 1610. 
Marie Antoinette saw the being in her palace one day before a mob stormed into it and ended the monarchy. Napoleon first encountered the Red Man in 1798 during his Egyptian campaign, striking up a deal with it. It promised him victory for the next 10 years. The Red Man predicted the campaign would eventually fail and that Napoleon would face a horde of European forces upon returning to France. After the Battle of Orgram in 1809, Napoleon wanted a five-year extension of their agreement. It was granted by the Red Man, on one condition. Napoleon avoid Russian conflict. The request was ignored and it led to a devastating loss. Napoleon would be visited one final time in 1814 with a warning that if peace was not had within three months, there would be dire consequences. It's an interesting theory. I just wonder why. Why would they do that? Unless it's demons and they're trying to manipulate the world to fall under chaos or something like that. And that's a pretty interesting theory. Let me know what you think it is because I'm very curious as to why there would be an entity just talking to people of power like that. Yeah. Was it in the Congo this week where it was discovered that the CIA was in fact forming a coup against the president? What? Three Americans were caught. CIA? Yeah. Tax paid employees? My taxes? They're in the Congo? It's well documented of countless coups that the yeah. CIA has done throughout the entire world. Yeah. I'll give one example. Man, this is like 100% proven. It was called the Banana Bass It was in, um, I believe, Guatemala. Survey says? Colombia. Dang it. They had this president who was basically giving the land back to the people. Big Fruit didn't like that in America because a lot of politicians had stake within the big fruit companies. And they basically formed a coup and they built a militia army and they basically get, uh, like got the president out and the U.S. selected the president that they wanted. What the heck? And it was a complete dictator. Resulting in over 2,000 deaths. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Quit eating bananas. At least the Chiquitas ones. Dang, that's all we buy. <laughs> I think things like this happen all the time, still to this day. There's always someone behind the scenes pulling the strings. But nonetheless, that is crazy. And I'm sure there was more to it than just bananas. If you thought rich people learned their lesson from Ocean Gate, you would be wrong. And Sir Billionaire Larry Connor, who made his fortune from real estate, has decided to take those skills to one of the most hostile environments on the planet. He's teaming up with Triton submarines to prove that exploring the Titanic is safe. Because he's totally qualified to know that the sub hasn't been built yet. But this is probably what it will look like in the next two years. It will be designed to dive about 13,000 feet. For reference, the Titanic is about 12,400 feet. Cutting it a little close for my taste. To be fair, this is not Connor's first rodeo. Him and the co-founder of Triton Submarines actually went to the Mariana Trench in 2021, which is deeper than the Titanic. And he's been to space. Because, to be clear, there is nothing wrong with exploration. I actually fully support the root of this. But how I see it is if you really believe in this so much, and you really want humanity to know more about the ocean, then you would send scientists and researchers to actually do work. You're a tourist, in my not-so-humble opinion, doing nothing more than stealing a seat from a professional who could do some legitimate research. Yeah, that's pretty scary. It'll eventually develop into scientists being able to do the research. It just seems like the rich people want to have their fun first. But overall, whoever tests this out, I hope the best for them because this is a dangerous job. Like there's archives that they have in Rome that haven't been searched. Like we're not, they're not just opening them up to everyone. Right. So that everyone could look in and see what they have. So there's yeah. always been speculation that they have some wild shit written down in there. Yeah, some wild stuff. I mean, they're investigating aliens. You know, right. I mean, one of the Pope's most a recent astronomers, speeches. they were talking about years ago, though. They were talking about years ago that they wanted to, the Pope wanted to baptize the first alien. <laughs> now, that's incredible. That's an incredible statement. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be like turning Michio Kaku into a scientist. Right. <laughs> right. Like, that would be hilarious. I know. That would be hilarious. And then they built this telescope called Lucifer to look for alien life. That's not a good name. Yeah. And you would think of anybody who would know better. Right. The light bearers that, you know, what Lucifer means, supposedly. But, yeah, they built a telescope named Lucifer. And it's actually in America. I believe it's in Arizona. Really? Yeah. Wow. Lucifer telescope. How yeah. kooky. One thing that I hope that I get to achieve before I die never will happen, but it would be a dream come true to at least get to explore the Vatican and just get the opportunity to go to the archives and look at things. I would be thrilled. Even if it's just a bunch of stuff that I don't understand what I'm looking at. 
Just let me have eyes at it. That's all I'm asking. Looks like an office building, right? Wrong. Looks like a synagogue. Wrong. These are actually oil rigs scattered around Los Angeles with these fake buildings around them to kind of hide them and trick the public into thinking they're not living near an active oil site. Easy to forget, but Los Angeles is one of the largest urban oil fields in the U.S. This is what Huntington Beach looked like a long time ago. Here's one on Pico Boulevard that just looks like a sad office building without any windows. But what do you know? Surprise, surprise. It's hiding 51 oil wells inside of it. As you can see from above, it's like open air, just, you know, spewing toxic chemicals to, to the houses right there, smack dab. It's in the middle of a neighborhood. Can't be good. Then in Pico Robertson, this structure is supposed to look like a synagogue, but no, religion catfish, it's actually an oil rig. You can see from above. But my personal favorite is this entire island off Long Beach that looks like a bachelorette casino destination. Unique structures that are, you know, you guessed it, they're oil rigs. There's actually like four of them scattered off the coast of Long Beach. And they're known as the astronaut islands because they're named after deceased astronauts. I don't, I don't understand the connection, but... The building and everything is meant to kind of reduce noise and other forms of pollution, but the same protections are not being applied to all the boatloads of oil rigs elsewhere under resource neighborhoods, so that's a whole other story. Do any of you live near anything like that? Let me know in the comments because that's actually pretty interesting and something I would have never thought about living next to, but apparently in LA it's pretty common. Y'all, check this out. And you can see from the way the camera is, it's not booms like that. It, he's emitting light. The cave is not shining light on him. The dude is emitting light of his own. Now, I'll let you hear where it's behind me. If anyone can translate, let me know what they're saying. I rebuke everything they're saying if it's not of God. So they are literally praying over this man. Some kind of language, some kind of religion praying over him. And you can see him getting lighter and lighter. And even the aura around the lightness, which proves it's not coming from like a cave top. But the, literally, the light is coming from him itself. Look at the glare coming off of him. Like, you can literally see. I don't know. To me, it looks like there might be a light in front of him, and it's just beaming on him real bright. Let me know what you guys think it is, but that's my theory. And I truly don't know what they're saying. So if anyone knows what they're saying, let me know that as well. There was a ship from, I believe, the 1700s that was carrying a bunch of cargo across the Atlantic. And they encountered this giant storm. And they started taking on water. And there's another ship. And they raised the flag saying, like, SOS. The other boat raised their flags like, the seas are too rough to send the lifeboat. And then the captain thought about it for a second. And they had a barrel of fish oil. He dumped the barrel overboard. And it calmed the ocean around what? him. Enough so to where this lifeboat could come and get them. And so this one guy that I saw did an experiment. He was at a lake and the, it was very windy that day. He took a tablespoon of fish oil, put it in the water. And for 50 plus yards, you could see the waves stop around this one area. So the oil keeps the water from waves forming because of the water. Tension. That's crazy. It's heavier than the water, right? Yeah. Crazy. But it was crazy. One tablespoon went out like 50 yards. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Apparently it was an old sailor trick to do. Watch your wow. knowledge, dude. Stop the fish oil. Wow. Wow, you learn something new every day. That's actually pretty cool. And that guy that, that did that experiment, I've seen some of his videos. I've never seen that one. Boy, Nick garnered and discovered another ancient megalith site, I do believe. This is Talking Rock Creek in Georgia. Watch these steps. Okay, this thing is just incredible. Well, no way. That's a, uh, that didn't just fall off the side of the hill here. Ain't no way, bro. And be a perfect platform. Well, because when you go down, there's another perfect platform. I mean, it's loaded from the water, obviously. There's a staircase. There's one. Look, there's another stair. And then this one. And look at this. 
And it leads to the cave. Amazing how those look like bricks. Look at that. Or like huge blocks. Look at it. Look how huge those are. The whole line. This is gorgeous look though. It's like a little staircase. Yeah. A lot of little natural staircases. I am almost certain that he is onto something. Those look like a staircase going down in a slight spiral. There's probably something there. I would not be able to leave. I would be all over that place looking for a doorway. I would I would love to explore that. That would be awesome. Are you missing teeth? Well, no need to worry because the world's first tooth regrowing medicine will be given to humans in September. And yes, I said that correctly. A medicine that will literally regrow your teeth, the bones in your mouth, or in America, as we call them, since we don't have universal health care, luxury bones, as they're often not covered by Medicare or Medicaid. So this is coming out of Kyoto University in Japan. They did successful animal trials not very long ago, regrowing the teeth of a ferret and various other rodents. And here is a video that the university put out that kind of breaks down the science of this process. You can actually see these teeth regrowing. Uh, there's just so, so incredibly much going on in this video. They're very, very specific about it. But uh, what they're going to do is they are going to, if I can find some interesting pictures, they're going to be testing this on men aged 30 to 64 that have lost some teeth. And then in the second phase of the trial, they're going to be trying this on children aged two to seven that have a birth defect or a genetic disorder that prevents them from growing a certain number of teeth. And they're hoping the medicine will help regrow teeth in older men who have lost them just due to consequences of living and also in children who have lost them because they were born that way. I think it would be downright awesome if there was a medicine that regrows teeth. Now, I do want to clarify this is a slow and painful process. Your teeth don't just boop back in in a few weeks. They have to grow in pretty slowly. It's not supposed to be fun or pleasant, but I do think it's very awesome that you can just straight up regrow them over time. And I genuinely hope that this works. I also really hope that this works. I think that this is a great opportunity for people that have certain illnesses with their mouth that made them lose teeth at a young age. Or if you just lose your teeth and you just wanna be able to grow new ones without getting dentures or implants. This is an awesome opportunity to gain new teeth. I cannot wait to see the, the future studies of how this works. Some people might be against it because it's considered manipulating things that we're not supposed to be manipulating. But to me, it's a great opportunity for someone that really is either self-conscious or is suffering with a lot of problems because they just don't have teeth. Let me know your thoughts about this. <laughs> Funny thing is, I did not realize this, but the person that was talking about this teeth growth, looking at his username, his name is Drifter TV. And that's Drifter with a zero in it instead of a, a, an O. I used to play video games with this guy way back in the day. We used to play like Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Gears of War. I did not realize that until just now. That's actually pretty neat. He's doing very well on TikTok. That's a small world. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you enjoyed any of these clips, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.